What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Pack a Day podcast. I'm your host, Andy Herman. You can follow me on Twitter at Andy Herman NFL. Thanks so much for joining me today. It is officially the day after the NFL schedule release. We know exactly who the Packers are playing, which we knew already, but we know when they're playing what times they are playing, where they're playing, all of it. We've got all of the details in order, et cetera. As I mentioned yesterday, not necessarily something that I always look forward to each year, but it is always fun to see this schedule in its totality. What are the green package, the gold package? How does the advantages and disadvantages of the schedule work out for each team? So we'll get through all of that in case you've been living under a rock. The exact schedule looks like this. I'm not going to read the times and everything like that, but at Minnesota Vikings, Bears at home for the Packers home opener week two, at Buccaneers, Patriots at home, Giants at home in London, Jets at home, then at Commanders, at Bills, at Lions, then we get two home games with at or with Cowboys at home, Titans at home, two away games at Eagles, at Bears, you finally get that bye week, Rams at home, at Dolphins, ending the season with Vikings at home, and then Lions at home. So there is your schedule. Now let's break it down. Let's get into all of it. The first thing that everyone looks to, right, is like, all right, who are they playing and are they going to be difficult teams or not? If you want to know the, you know, ins and outs of their strength of schedule and everything like that, well, technically they have the 11th easiest strength of schedule that's based on last year's records, right? Which means mostly nothing. I think we have some idea that the NFC North is probably not going to be great. I think we also have a pretty good idea that the NFC in general is probably going to be worse than it was a season ago. But I am less caught up when we see the schedule of which teams are good, which teams are bad, and when they play those teams, because frankly, we just don't know. We don't know which teams are going to be much better than they were a season ago. We don't know which teams are going to be worse. We have an idea. We have a feel, but injuries are always going to guide a huge portion of that. And at this point, I just don't care because we don't know who's good and who's bad, and it's impossible to predict that at this point. If you know that, I would recommend heading to Vegas and putting as many hefty bets down, or maybe just from the, you know, your own internet connection at home or app or wherever you want to place your bets these days. But if you know who's going to be good and bad, probably place those bets right now, but we simply don't know. And the other thing, right, is like some of these teams are going to be bad, but we don't know when they're going to be bad. And I'll use a great example of that, right? So the Chicago Bears in week two. The Bears are a team I would love to face multiple times later in the season. The reason is because at that point, they're probably going to know that they're a very bad football team. They're they're just not set up to win games. That general manager group, the, the, the you know front office, if you will, isn't setting them up to win games this year. They know that it's better and in the best interest of the Bears, if they actually tank a little bit, don't do the best and set themselves up for two years from now when the Vikings are either don't have a quarterback or are still paying Kirk Cousins a ton of money, Aaron Rodgers is probably retired and who knows at quarter who's at quarterback for the Lions, right? So the Bears know that two to three years from now, the NFC North is going to be much better set up for them. And instead of going all in now and spending a bunch of money on players that are going to make them go to seven and 10 or something, like they're just playing it safe, playing it soft and getting some better draft picks down the road. I hate that for Green Bay because I think they're actually doing the smart thing. But my point being here from a schedule release standpoint is that the Bears this season are going to be bad. Maybe they win five games-ish. I don't think it's going to be much more than that. But either way, they are likely to be bad. But in week two, when you play the Bears, they may not know that yet. They may not know that they're going to be a 4-13 and team, and they have to win four games at some point to be a 4-13 and team, and oftentimes you will see everyone playing a little bit harder in the first few weeks of the season because everyone thinks they're good early in the season. Now, the Bears probably know they're not competing for any Super Bowls this season, but you never quite know what the mentality of a football team is, and most football teams, regardless, are starting off with the thought process that they can go out and win football games. No one's going out as a football player, as a head coach to tank and lose games, right? So I would much rather face the Bears later in the season when they're already bad and they've probably already given up on the season a little bit. Week two is a terrible time to face the Bears because again, they are still probably thinking, hey, we might be a good team. They don't know any better at that point. So I hate facing the Bears that point in the season. The Buccaneers, 
you know, I don't really like seeing them week three with the age that Tom Brady's at. I like my odds better that maybe he doesn't make it healthy through the course of an entire season and that, or he wears down through the course of the year. Tom Brady in week 15 or 16 sounds a bit better than Tom Brady with a live arm in week three in Tampa Bay. That doesn't sound as great. So some of these teams, when you face them matters, right? But we just ultimately don't know because you might look at the Cowboys when Green Bay faces the Cowboys in the middle of the season and are like, man, that looks like a really tough game. Mike McCarthy coming to Lambeau, like that's going to be a barn burner. And then, you know, Micah Parsons and Dak Prescott are out with an injury and the Packers win by 30 or, you know, Aaron Rodgers and, you know, whomever Aaron Jones are out and the other team wins by 30. So to go through strength of schedule and to say, well, this team's gonna, this game's going to be a win and this is going to be a loss and this team's going to be really tough to play against, we simply just don't know. And you might be thinking to yourself, okay, Andy, well, then what the heck is the point of breaking down the schedule if we're not going to go team by team and say who's good, who's bad, et cetera, et cetera? Well, there are a lot of things that you can glean from the schedule, good, bad, ugly, and different that are competitive advantages or competitive disadvantages just based on how the schedule is put together. And that is the crux of what I want to get to today. So if you want to look at the records, you're more than welcome to do so. If you want to go win, 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 loss, win, loss, win, 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 whatever you want to do and mark it up, that's cool. I used to do that. That's fun, but it's more fun to actually see the games play out, which is really the fun of it. But let's get into those actual disadvantages and advantages that the Packers have built in through the course of their schedule. And again, you might look at some of these and be like, all right, Andy, Green Bay has a disadvantage against the Lions, but it's the Lions. Or Green Bay has a disadvantage against X team, but who cares because they're terrible. Again, we don't know who's good, bad, ugly, or indifferent at this point. So I'm not looking at this as if they're going against an easy team or a hard team. I'm just looking at some of the baked in advantages and disadvantages. So let's go to disadvantages first. All right. The biggest thing that I look at every single time when the schedule comes out is what competitive disadvantages that the Packers have based on rest. And what I mean by that is For example, if a team plays on Thursday night football before you play them, they're going to get an additional three to four days of rest before you're actually playing them, you know, what, a week and a half basically later. Same thing if you play on Monday night football, right? If you play on Monday night football, then you get one extra day of, or one fewer day of rest than a team that probably played on Sunday the day before. Those are some of the advantages and disadvantages that I'm looking for. So from a disadvantage standpoint, there are plenty of them. So the Packers play the Commanders, and prior to that week, the Commanders play on Thursday night football the week before. So they actually get a few extra days of rest, basically like a mini bye week before playing the Packers and having more time to prepare for the Packers. That is a disadvantage for Green Bay. Packers-Bills, that huge matchup in Buffalo, the Bills have a bye week before that week. That is a massive advantage for the Bills. Cowboys-Packers, you guessed it, that massive matchup, Mike McCarthy and the Dallas Cowboys against the Green Bay Packers. Mike McCarthy and the Dallas Cowboys have a bye week prior to that matchup. They have a huge advantage in that game because they have a full extra week of rest that Green Bay does not. Two smaller ones, uh, Dolphins have one extra day of rest uh, prior to that game because the Packers play on Monday night football. And in week 17, the Vikings have one extra day of rest before that game as well. Five games in total where the opposing team will have more rest than what Green Bay will have. Some of those just a day probably doesn't matter a lot, but the Commanders, the Bills, and the Cowboys all will have pretty significant advantages in those games. In fact, the Packers have the absolute worst net days of rest in the entirety of the NFL with negative 13. They have a net 13 less days of rest than their opponents, which I'll say it again, is the worst in the NFL. No team got the shorter end of the stick than the Green Bay Packers when it came to days of rest and how it compares to their opponents. So that is a big disadvantage for Green Bay. It just is. You want to be well rested when you're playing the team across from you, right? And you certainly don't want them to have an extra, I don't know, let's say seven days of rest prior to playing them like the Bills and um, obviously the Bills do and the Cowboys do. So those are things that Green Bay are going to have to overcome through the middle of their schedule. In addition, they do play two teams who have their home openers. So they will have an advantage playing the Bears in their home home opener in the Packers home opener in week two, but they have to play the Vikings in week one when it's the Vikings home opener 
and they have to face the Buccaneers in week three when it's their home opener. And ultimately, probably doesn't matter a ton, but usually the crowd is a little bit more energetic and jacked up, and the team usually likes to do a little bit better in their home opener. So that could also be viewed as a disadvantage. Green Bay also has a very tough three-game road trip in the middle of their schedule. Again, you might look at the teams and say, it's not that bad, all things considered, but they still have to go to the Commanders on the road, the Bills on the road, and the Lions on the road in back-to-back-to-back games. That can get pretty daunting. Now, the good news there is Washington, Buffalo, Detroit, all three of those aren't super far away. It's not like they're going all the way East Coast and all the way West Coast and all the way back East Coast. They don't have any trips like that. So that's very advantageous in that regard. But still, any three-game road trip is definitely going to be disadvantageous. They also have to go to London as one of their home games. That has been known for some time now. I'm not breaking any news here, but that is clearly a disadvantage. And if you look at that portion of the schedule, right? three games in the middle or at really the beginning of the schedule that should be Patriots at home, Giants at home, Jets at home. Three straight home games to really sort of kick off your year after at Vikings, Bears at home, at Bucks should be three straight home games at that point. Instead, it's basically a home game and then a far away neutral site game and then another home game. And yes, I do believe Green Bay will have more fans in London than the Giants will, but it's still a huge travel expense that's taxing for the team that it should just be waking up in Green Bay, being able to go to the game and play the game. So that is a major difference as well. And again, what I would consider a disadvantage for the Packers. So those are all the disadvantages. Lots of lack of rest or the opposing teams have more rest than Green Bay does. They have to go to the Vikings and the Buccaneers for their home openers three road games in a row, and a trip to London for a home game, which is not necessarily ideal. Now, Green Bay does have some schedule advantages as well. It just don't add up quite as well as some of the disadvantages did. So they do play on Thursday night football against the Titans prior to facing the Eagles. So when they face the Eagles, they will have a few additional days of rest in that game prior to, again, taking on the Eagles, which should give them an advantage in that game. And they do also have their bye week before taking on the Rams in that huge matchup. So having the extra week of rest when the Rams do not will give them an advantage in that game as well. However, once again, the net rest days is negative 13 for Green Bay, which I'll utter it one more time, is the worst in football. Now, as I look at this schedule and what portion of the schedule to me is a bit more daunting, I start with that trip to London. And once again, I'll just say it, I'm not looking at who they're playing here, right? I'm looking at the formation of the schedule and how Green Bay has to travel through these games. And again, some of those disadvantages that we just talked about. So what should be a home game against the Giants, which you really like your chances on, I still like Green Bay's chances against the Giants in this game a ton, but you have to travel all the way to London and then come all the way back from London. No bye week. They then face the Jets at home, which again, Giants, Jets, back-to-back doesn't seem terrible, right? But they fly to London, then they play a game at home. Then you go back to back to back road games at Commanders, at Bills, at Lions. So that Commanders game, remember, Washington has a few extra days of extra rest coming off the Thursday night football game. Then the Bills game, the Bills are coming off their bye week and your second road game in a row. And then the third game is again, the third game on the road back to back to back against the Lions. You then come home for against the Cowboys and you're finally like, all right, at least that big road trip is over. But you face the Cowboys at home and the Cowboys are coming off their bye week. And then you have short rest against the Tennessee Titans on Thursday night football. And yes, The Titans have short rest as well, but you're coming off London home game away, 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 Cowboys at home in a tough matchup who's coming off a bye, and then another short rest game. So finally, you get a little bit of a reprieve coming off that Titans game, and you get a little bit of a mini bye week, and then you still go back-to-back road games at Eagles, at Bears. So think about that for a second. Travel to London, short reprieve home game against the Jets. Commanders who have extra rest on the road, Bills who have extra rest on the road, Lions on the road, Cowboys coming off a bye at home, Titans on short rest, at Eagles, at Bears. That is traveling 
a ton in that time frame and facing multiple teams, three teams to be exact, who have baked in advantages because of having extra rest, having to go back to back to back road games, flying to London and back. There is a lot to unpack there in that trip. Now, again, you might be very clearly thinking, all right, Andy, like that's one thing, but some of these games, Giants should be a win, Jets should be a win, Commander should be a win, Lions should be a win, Titans should be a win, Eagles should be a win, Bears should be a win. Heck, even if they lose against the Bills and the Cowboys, like that stretch of what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 games, nine games, is like, even if they go seven and two, you feel pretty good about that. Sure, absolutely. And we can talk what Green Bay's record should be with this schedule, which should be pretty good. But I'm not talking here again about who's good, who's bad. I'm just talking about those tough ebbs and flows throughout the schedule that could give Green Bay a little bit of an extra taxing on their bodies through the course of the season that adds up over the course of the time. Because again, it may not seem like anything and they may pick up a bunch of these wins, but a ton of tough travel and flying to London and back to back to back road games, those things add up over time. So those are the things that I'm looking at as potential disadvantages. And again, from that trip to London through their bye week is to me the really, really tough uh, group of games, again, just based on travel. The opponents don't look all that hard on paper outside of the, the Cowboys and the Bills, but it's just sort of a wait and see approach. And if all of a sudden, again, you have a few injuries during that time frame, all of a sudden that that stretch that you feel like you should be seven and two, eight and one, you go five and four, four and five, and the entirety of the season changes because again, you have some tough baked in disadvantages through that group of games. Now, the plus side is that from November 28th through the end of the season, you don't have a ton of travel. So you go to Chicago, but that's again, basically what you blink and that flight is over with. A bye week, Rams at home, then you go to Dolphins, which is their only real travel in that stretch, and then Vikings at home, Lions at home. So from November 28th through January 7th, and again, really basically November 28th through the end of the season, only one real you know, travel date, and that's to Miami. And again, you have a Bears game on there as well, but the, you're not concerned about the travel on that game. And the last five weeks of the season, bye week where you get the rest at home, Rams at home, at Dolphins, Vikings at home, Lions at home. You are at home through a huge chunk of the last part of the season. The only uh, road game at all is at Dolphins on Christmas Day in Miami, which, you know, who doesn't want to spend Christmas in Miami for a, for a Packer game? But I digress. Overall, to end the season and start refreshing the batteries a little bit before the playoffs start, that is a huge advantage. Another advantage is, of course, the late bye week. Having that is going to hopefully set the Packers up for success as they make that late stretch run. And again, you come back from that bye week and four of the last five games are at home, or excuse me, three of the last four are at home with only the one travel date to Miami. So you really like that as well. All of this being said, reviewing all of this in its totality is there's going to be some real logistical challenges to getting through this schedule. Some teams are going to be good when Green Bay plays them. Some teams are going to be bad. Green Bay is expected to be clearly one of the best teams in the NFC, clearly win the NFC North. And if those two things are not true, something has probably gone very wrong, which we're not even going to speak that into existence, right? I ultimately don't care right now or this season if this is another 13-win team under Matt LaFleur, better, or another 10 and, or a 10 and 7 team. I don't care. And the reason I say that is, what I'm concerned about, what I do care about, is that for the first time in the Matt LaFleur era, this team plays its best football in January and February. Because I have seen three straight really good 13-win teams, and all of them lost in the playoffs. All of them combined won two playoff games, which last I checked is not enough to win you a Super Bowl in one season, much less the fact that you only won two playoff games in three seasons. So the schedule looks great. I like it. I think there's going to be some adversity that they have to overcome. I think there's some logistics that they're going to have to get through. I think there's a decent amount of baked in disadvantages that Green Bay is going to have to navigate. I don't care. And if they have to lose a few games in the middle of the season to learn some of those lessons, to become, to hopefully harden a team and become a better team come January and February, I'm all here for it. They've had great teams. They've had 13 win seasons. 
They've had home field advantage throughout the playoffs. They've been the number one seed. They've got the bye, and it's got them nowhere. I don't care about the regular season and what their record is because this is a team that's going to be in the playoffs, and they need to play their best football in January and February, and they need to win the three or four games that they need to win to win a Super Bowl. And that's what matters. And ultimately, that end stretch where they don't travel a ton, they get their bye, they hopefully get their legs back underneath them, get a little bit of rest that they are going to desperately need at that time, will hopefully propel them to start playing their best football of the season at the time that they absolutely need to most and something that they haven't done over the last three years under Matt LaFleur, despite him being impressive in every other way and being, a, in my opinion, a fantastic football coach. This is about playing your best football in January and February and going and winning a Super Bowl. That has eluded three very good Green Bay Packer teams and is something that Green Bay is desperately trying to avoid and have not elude them for a fourth straight season. Thanks so much for joining me today. We're going to we're going to we're not going to end on a negative note. We're going to end on a positive note. I like this schedule. I like this team. I think Green Bay's really set up for success this year and I'm very excited to see how Green Bay navigates this schedule, how many wins they can put together and of course if they can play their best football in January and February. Appreciate you joining me. I'll be right back here tomorrow with an all new episode, but until next time and as always, go Pack Go.